namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namaste. So today I'm going to try to explain for the umpteenth time something that is really difficult to understand. Paticca Samupada is the whirlpool of becoming. It's a whirlpool. Why is that? Well, first I'm going to read one quote, only one, <laughs> but it's a very important quote. And then I'm going to try to explain it in terms of the four states of consciousness that we've been studying all along here. So ready? <laughs> here goes. In so far only, Ananda, can one be born or grow old or die or pass away or reappear, in so far only is there any pathway for verbal expression, in so far only is there any pathway for terminology, in so far only is there any pathway for designation, in so far only is the range of wisdom, in so far only is the round kept going for there to be a designation as a thisness, that is to say, name and form together with consciousness. This is such a great sutta, Mahanidana. So let's start from empty, blank space. Nothingness, not emptiness, but nothingness, no thingness, empty space. Now, how do we create a thing? How do we make a distinction in completely empty space between this thing and the space around it? Well, what we do is that we start an artificial rotation. We start a vortex. How do we do that? We name the thing. Okay, this is my thing. And then we develop a consciousness that is looking for that thing. Let's use the body as an example. At first there's nothing. And then we get this idea, let there be a body. And then we call it my body. <laughs> then we develop a consciousness to perceive that body. And that body is perceived in terms of its name, my body. And then we go back and forth between the consciousness and the name and form. Consciousness and name and form. Consciousness and name and form. <laughs> And this creates a rotation, a vortex, a whirlpool, as the Buddha says, the round kept going. We keep the round going by oscillating between the consciousness and the name and form, consciousness and name and form, back and forth, back and forth. And we hide this from ourselves by ignorance. By saying, we're not doing this, this is just happening. So out of the nothingness, we create a thisness, a somethingness, a thing. So I know it might be a little hard to follow. It's completely obvious to me. <laughs> but I'll try to give a step-by-step -step example 
going through the stages of Paticca Samuppada from the beginning and show how we create a body. Here we go. At first, there's nothing. Then we develop ignorance. And there's ignorance is threefold, positive and negative desire. I want this, I don't want that. And delusion, the idea that we can create an individual self. Now, this is happening on the level of the Ananda Maya Kosha. Remember the five bodies teaching? So this is the Ananda Maya Kosha. Uh, blissful ignorance. <laughs> then from the ignorance, we create a Sankara, fabrication. That, okay, I'm going to distinguish this body from the nothing around it. And then I'm going to give it a consciousness. I'm developing the consciousness of this body. The body is going to look like this. It's going to feel like that. It's going to do this, that, and the other thing. It's going to have possessions of this and that and so forth. And we develop a whole description for it. And that description rests in the Vijnana Maya Kosha, the will body because fabrications are wills. And this creates a name and form. We have a name for the body. This is my body. We have a form for the body. It looks like this. It goes like that. It does this and that. It possesses this and that and the other thing. Then we go back and forth between that consciousness and that name and form. And that creates the vortex. That creates the whirlpool of becoming. What's next? The six sense bases. Now, this occurs in the mind. The six senses don't exist yet, but the bases for them in the mind are created as part of the name and form. So then we start to imagine the contact of those six senses with their objects. And this is on the level of mind, the monomaya kosha. So that generates feelings, good, bad, and neutral feelings. So these are all going on simply in the mind. But at this point, we start to create the actual physical body. We start to crave those different feelings whether good, bad, or neutral, we crave them. We have desires for them. And that leads to clinging, clinging to those feelings, clinging to those senses, clinging to that idea of a body. And at this point, we enter physicality. The pranamaya kosha, the energy body, is born from these feelings, cravings, and clingings. And that leads to becoming when this energy body moves into the womb of a mother and begins to create the gross body. And of course, becoming leads to birth. And birth leads to aging and death. And these are all properties of the anamaya kosha, the food body, the meat body, the gross body that we live in this world. And that leads to suffering. All of this uh, tremendous work of creativity, creating the body, only leads to suffering. What a shame, what a waste. But if we finally wake up and we realize, wait a minute, I don't want this suffering. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. I'm going to do something about it. And we go searching for the way out. Eventually, we meet a teacher. Even though we're still a Pashu, we're still an animal with two legs, living in Jagra, consciousness of the world. When we meet a teacher, we get knowledge. That eliminates ignorance, and we get conviction. Then when we practice that knowledge, 
we reach contentment, and then we get rapture. We get happiness beyond anything we've ever experienced. And this is all part of the Dvaita Vada. We're still in duality. We're still in Jagrat, consciousness of the world. But now we have serenity because we have knowledge and we're on the path. This leads to pleasure real pleasure for the first time, pleasure without an object, because the name and form and the six senses now are vanquished. And that leads to samadhi, where contact goes away. We're no longer dependent on contact of the senses with their objects. We're running on pure knowledge now. And that's Vishishtadvaita Vada, Swapna consciousness. It's still a dream. It's still not reality, but it's a much better dream than the nightmare we were going through in Jagrat. This leads to first path realization. The first path is when we get the Dhamma eye, that all this is conditionally arisen and it will all pass away. So then that leads to disenchantment with the world and the body-mind, and that leads to dispassion. We no longer can get excited about attaining things in the world or related with the body. This is Vivartavada, and this is Sushupti consciousness where we go deep into meditation, and that leads to release. We are no more bound by birth and death. We don't have to come back into a body anymore. And that leads to cessation. Cessation of the idea that I am an individual and I am a body and I'm taking birth in the world and so on. And that is Nibbana. Once we reach Nibbana, this is Ajatavada, Turiya consciousness, this whole range. And then, of course, that leads to unbinding or permanent cessation of the round of birth and death. So the samsara is likened to a wheel turning. Huh? That's because it's a vortex. This vortex of birth and death is facilitated by our own ignorance. Actually, we are the Satchit Ananda. We are the Brahman. We are Nibbana at the core, at the root. But we allow ourselves to be covered over by ignorance and influenced by desire. And that is how we wind up in this terrible situation in the material world where we're bound to a body and we're forced to see things in terms of the dualities of the senses where we are forced to experience all these feelings, good, bad, and neutral, where we identify with so many name and form, nomenclature, verbal expression. See, these are the paths to becoming that the Buddha talked about in the quote in the beginning. So one by one, by cultivating knowledge, and by applying that knowledge in meditation, we gradually loosen the bondage to name and form. We overcome the identification with the mind and body. We reach a realization that we are nothing but pure consciousness, and so is everything else. <laughs> this is first path. And then we go on from there to realize Nibbana, Nibbana is complete cessation of suffering. Now, the suffering may still be going on. In prarabdha karma attached to the body and mind. But we don't think that it has anything to do with us. Because we have realized our real nature. That is always beyond suffering. Beyond birth and death. And at that point the whole whirlpool collapses. Aung Tat Sat. 
ओम शक्ति ओम